Today I'd like to give you my PowerPoint tips for professional looking PowerPoint presentations. Keep in mind these are just my opinions, but uh, hopefully you'll agree with them and you'll end up with a better looking PowerPoint presentation because of it. First of all, I recommend that you do not use templates. They're very cheesy looking. Everybody's seen them before and they know that it's a template from PowerPoint and you're not going to impress anyone with the templates that you use. Here's a template right here. It just looks very amateur looking. All right, how about your font that you use with your uh, text? I recommend that you use one kind of font throughout the entire presentation. Keep it something simple. You don't want to use some crazy, strange looking font. And that's right here. Let's see, get my pen working. That's one font. And try to stick with one color font throughout your presentation. And then also, you are allowed to, in my opinion, use two different sizes. To emphasize your main points, you can have a large font size and then a smaller font size for your sub points. So remember, one font style, one color throughout your presentation, and two sizes is okay. All right, here's some examples of not a good job with the fonts. We've got font number one, font number two, they throw in this fancy thing with gray lettering. And then we go to a big red lettering here and then blue with a completely different font and just gets obnoxious. Keywords only on your text. Minimal text. This is probably the biggest crime that I see people commit on their PowerPoint presentations. They try to get all the information on the screen. The information should come out of your mouth. Remember this is a support, a visual support for what you're talking about. You do not want to give everybody everything that you want to tell them on the screen. Your mouse should be giving them those things. Here's an example of someone that just throws a ton of text all over it. When you see this, you're thinking, oh, I don't want to have to read all that. And besides, if they wanted you to read, then why don't they just hand you a book? It's not really a PowerPoint presentation if they're telling you everything on the screen. Here's another example of just too much text on the screen. What I'm going to do right now is show you how I would take all this text and uh, narrow it down to just the minimal basic most important words that you see here. So you might want to pause the video for a second and read these points because then you're going to see how I would uh, take that down to a smaller amount of text. And this is what I came up with with all that text narrowed it down to just these few words. How about your graphics? That means the visual things besides the words on the page, your pictures and so on. Uh, first of all, I would always choose photos over clip art. Clip art, again, is kind of cheesy and amateurish looking. If you can find a good picture to put in your PowerPoint presentation instead, it's going to be more appealing to your audience and more professional looking. Here's a slide that has a bunch of clip art all over it. Boring and cheesy. All right, bigger is usually better on your graphics as well. You don't want to have small pictures on the screen. People like to see it nice and big. Now this uh, slide got cut off slightly, but you can see we've got a really big picture of a ship over here. Nice big sky going on, clouds and everything. It's not just some little tiny picture on the screen. Here's a bad example of how not to do it. This small picture centered in the screen like this. Uh, you want to stretch that picture out if at all possible, unless it's going to get blurry and make it nice and big looking on the screen. More like that. Of course now my text isn't good, but uh, that's how you want to show your graphics. Text overlap. Don't do it. Don't have text touching any other text or text touching your graphics. Here's an example of text overlapping, actually overlapping a graphic that's acceptable to me because it's on a map. So it's, whoa, didn't mean to do that. Switch it back over to the pen. So we've got text here, text here, text here, but it's on top of a map, so that's okay. But in this situation, having the text over the top of this picture is not good. It'd be much better to move your picture off to one side a little bit more and have your text by itself like that. All right, how about text contrast between dark and light? You either want to have a nice dark text on a very light background or vice versa, a really light text like white on a very dark background. I'm going to show you, and by the way, you see here that I'm using a dark text on a light background. I'm going to show you what it looks like with the exact same slide done incorrectly. Look at that. You can probably, in fact, you probably can't even read that, but it actually says text contrast dark and light on the screen right here. But I, the problem is, is I'm using such a dark background and my text isn't that light 
and so it's very difficult to see. Okay, try to follow the rule of thirds for the most part when you're setting things up. Don't center things. Let me show you what that would look like. The rule of thirds says, and I actually make, I create a, a black uh, piece that covers on top and bottom to kind of give my screen more of a long, uh, wide, you know, kind of a widescreen look to it. I like that look better. You don't need to do that, but kind of prefer it. And that helps me a little bit with setting up my rule of thirds. So rule of thirds says that we're going to draw like a tic-tac-toe pattern on the screen. And you can see right here that my words on this top part and the words on the bottom part are lined up with the bottom and top third of my white screen area. Um, also, the text over here is more off to the side by the right-hand third, and my picture over here to the left is by the left-hand third. Now, this is quite a bit off-center on my picture, but that's because the picture, if I were to put it right here, I don't want all this white space over here, but that would be acceptable to put it like that as well. If you did that, you probably want to move this over to here and move that over to there like that. So you want things lined up a lot of the time with the crosshairs of your thirds. Good place to put text or graphics on the screen. Let me show you why that looks better. Here's an example of how not to do it. That word is smack in the center of the screen and it's just very boring like that. It's not appealing to our eye. And the next thing is you should keep it simple. Eliminate any unnecessary things on the screen. You want to keep people focused and not have a lot of distracting things going on. Here is an example of how not to do that. We've got graphics all over the place. Uh, you know, these lovely looking light bulb things and bent pictures and fancy text and you know just all kinds of stuff all over the place different colored text all over that's not keeping it simple that's making it very complicated not appealing to the eye at all now be careful when you're moving this your pictures actually when you're stretching out your pictures watch out for that stretch you might end up warping the way your picture looks uh, you, what you want to do is grab the picture and here's an example of how not to do that uh, you can see that this yak or whatever that is is like all smushed up so when you grab the picture, you got to make sure you grab it from the corner down here because what I did when I did this is I grabbed it from the side and then you end up with this funky looking picture like that. You want to keep your aspect ratio is what it's called by grabbing only this corner down here when you resize your photos. No grabbing at the side and don't grab at the top or the bottom. You'll end up having something that looks really tweaked like that. All right, uh, the kids just love to throw in these fun transitions. Don't do it. They look cheesy. Just have your slides and your text. If you want to have text popping in, that's fine, but it should just pop in right away without any twirling or dissolving or anything like that. You just don't see that stuff done by professionals on television. It's only done by people that are amateur uh, makers of PowerPoint presentations. And I'm going to show you an example of how not to do it right now. Here's my PowerPoint presentation, uh, part of it at least, and look at that transition. Don't do that. That just looks cheesy like that. And there's another cheesy transition. Stay away from those things. You're distracting your audience. They're watching your transition instead of focusing on your PowerPoint presentation. All right, back to my regular PowerPoint presentation that I was showing you here. And this is the last thing that's a big no-no. Don't put a slide that says that it's the end and don't thank your audience for watching. Just tell them that it's the end when you're doing your presentation. Thank them for coming if you want to do that, but you don't need a slide for that. Uh, it'd be much better to have maybe some information about yourself at the end or something like that, but no slides that say the end or thanks for watching. This is a no-no. And speaking of the end, that's the end. Thanks for watching.